Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number three of StarCraft Mass Recall, where we are going to be heading into the meat and potatoes of the first Terran campaign. I'm excited for this. This is really where we get to start doing macro missions and stuff like that. And that's what I love to do, is just some good clean macro, power building, taking bases, shooting enemies with gun, all of our favorite things. In the wake of the chaos resulting from the Zerg invasion, the sons of Korhal escaped with their stolen data disks. Fleeing to the border colony of Antigua Prime, Arturus's group now plans its next crucial move against the Confederacy. Thirteen hours after the evacuation of Marsara, Protoss warships took up orbit around the colony and unleashed a massive planetary bombardment. All life on the surface was extinguished. Oh yeah, so I said... I forgot that I'm supposed to do a recap of what happened last time at the beginning of the episode, <laughs> so I guess the game remembered for me. Thank you, game. Hey man, headquarters has begun analysis of the disks. They expect to have them decoded shortly. I hope whatever's on those disks is worth it. Receiving incoming transmission from Arcturus Minsk. You and Captain Reyna have done well, Commander. I believe our efforts have weakened the Confederacy's grip on the fringe worlds. But our job out here isn't done yet. Lieutenant Kerrigan, my second in command, will elaborate. I'll get straight to the point. Our sources tell us that Antigua Prime is ready to begin open revolt against the Confederacy. Unfortunately, the Confederates seem to be aware of this as well. They've stationed a large detachment of Alpha Squadron troops there, under the command of General Duke. It will be your job, Commander, to free this colony and show our good intent to the Antiguan people. Lieutenant Kerrigan will help you deal with Duke's officers. The rest of the Confederates are yours to deal with. It's always interesting when they introduce all these minor characters who are never going to show up again. It's cool. Look at how bouncy that truck is. He's like... Oh, here we go. This is Jimmy. No more bouncing time. This should rain her here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, let's get our hero unit. Right on. Captain Raynor, I finished scouting out the area, and you pig. What? I haven't even said anything to you yet. Yeah, but you were thinking it. Oh, yeah. You're a telepath. Look, let's just get on with this, okay? Kerrigan's telepathy, a thing that absolutely comes up ever again in StarCraft. <laughs> it totally does, I promise. Um. <laughs> oh, we're attacking the gate. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Though it is kind of weird that... <laughs> I feel like as a introduction to the mechanic there, there probably should have been a unit that could shoot her while she's cloaked under the turrets instead of just saying it. But, you know, 1998 tutorials on mechanics were not known for being the best. Nowadays, they'd probably do a little bit better. Actually, how do they do it for cloaked units in, like, or in Wings of Liberty? I'm not entirely sure. I assume they did it better. All right, let's follow the road. There's Alpha Squadron. Now what we gotta do is cloak care. Oh, hey, look at that! I don't think that's how it is. In oh, wait, we can just walk past, huh? It is how it is in the normal or in the original game, isn't it? Look at that! 1998 was ahead of its time. This is like 2001 levels of tutorial here. I'm very proud. That's cool. I've taken care of business on this end, Commander. I think the Antigans are ready to back us 
some, too. That's right. We've tolerated these Confederate goons long enough. So in the base game, the way that it works is what happens. Uh, it just, it freeze frames on the command. What are you doing, bud? It freeze frames on the command center and you don't actually get to see the assassination happen. I really like that they add the assassination in. That's super cool. The little details are just great. I'm picking up a large Confederate strike force advancing on our position. Uh oh. All over me. Oh, it's a wraith. What now? <gasps> okay, we don't want to lose this bunker. Bunkers are expensive and we can't salvage it. So we want to uh, repair this bad boy up. They give you a lot of defenses here, which I actually think is a really smart way for one of the first aggressive missions. I know that sounds a bit weird to give a bunch of defenses to the player when they're learning how to be aggressive in the game. But it's very, very easy to forget to build those defenses when you're getting, if you're, like, focused on aggression. So I think it's pretty smart. Also, Kerrigan's really hurt, so I'm just going to put her in a bunker forever. And we're going to repair these up and hopefully be able to use these to turtle. And nothing will go wrong. This is an interesting mission because the enemy base is actually on an island. So the first time they want you to be really aggressive in a macro mission is also an island map, which is just it's a bit odd, but it will be better than it is in the base game because in normal Starcraft one, using dropships is just absolutely abysmal. It is not a fun experience. I think it's going to be a little bit better today, at least I hope. Now what I'm definitely doing is making sure my spider mines are everywhere. I'm in love with these bad boys. Ooh, Ray Squadron. Alpha Squadron's pissed today. Oh my gosh, the Wraith is really not microbial. <laughs> Why? I know this is probably realistic turning speeds, but my goodness, it's already one of the worst units in StarCraft. That with the Scout. It does not need to be bulky and immobile. Oh, this is actually a good thing to discuss. So you can see that they are actually shooting even though my bunker's on the high ground. Reason that is, is in StarCraft 1, when you are on the high ground and you fire, you are revealed and the enemy can fire back. However, there is a mischance. I believe that it's supposed to be 50%, but in reality it's like 44% or something because, you know, it's an old game and math. I don't know exactly how it works in Mass Recall. I think that the way that it works is there's a flat damage reduction of 50% in order to simulate that effect. What do you guys think about random mischance? I think that can be the thing that we talk about today is units missing in RTS. <laughs> Maybe the relentless aggression of Alpha Squadron should be what we talk about with four units at a time. Man, they are way more aggressive than the base game. The base game is very, very passive overall. Until you get into Brood War. Brood War is where they, where they up the numbers. I'm glad that it's more dynamic here. I think that the enemy sends like two or three drops ever against you. Normally. So I need to figure out exactly what I'm doing. Oh, uh, oh the discussion topic I forgot already. Oh, mischance, right. So, mischance, high ground, all that kind of thing, defender's advantage, this kind of be a broader category. How do you like doing that sort of thing? Do you think that missing is okay in an RTS? Especially a competitive one. Do you think that it's cool that, or do you think, because, you know, games will be decided on that. For example, in Warcraft 3, the critical strike ability on the Blade Master has a 15% chance to deal two, three, or four times extra damage, depending on the rank. And that can, when it procs, it definitely dictates games. In StarCraft 1, when a siege tank is on the high ground and fires, that absolutely dictates the game as well sometimes. However, it does provide a little bit more volatility in the game. StarCraft 2 is fairly famous for being a very consistent game. Is that good? Is that bad? I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. 
I really like these discussion topics, by the way. <laughs> the fire bats. <laughs> They're trying. Oh. One thing that's very weird about StarCraft 1 is that they don't actually tell you what units you have available when you unlock them. For example, in this mission, I unlock the dropship, I unlock the wraith, and I just had to know that. I had to... I've played this campaign before, I've played StarCraft 1 before, so I've speed ran this mission about 15 times. So I kind of know it like the back of my head, back of my hand, I don't know the back of my head. But for example, there's the mission that you unlock the siege tank, and I actually didn't know that for a really long time. <laughs> Got it. Can I take your order? So things are more like you have to discover them yourself instead of have them explained to you, which I think has some value, but it also has some big negatives to it, where it can lead to a lot of confusion and a lot of frustration. We're going to have to get an armory, which is an unfortunate statement in this world. What we're going to do is... The enemy base is down here. It's a giant island. I'm gonna get commsats on my command centers. Those are the scan ability, basically. You make an add-on that has the ability to scan. And we're going to use that in order to scout the base, find a proper LZ. One thing I like about Mass Recall is I don't know where the good LZs are. It's probably not the same as in the base game. So we get to scout it out. We're gonna find an LZ, and then we're going to start shepherding over our infantry. I'm going to try to secure the area, and I might even bring a couple SCVs to bunker the area up. I don't know if that's dumb, but it does seem like if I could get a couple bunkers in place then and just keep them repaired, that could be a good way to get a bulkhead. As you can see, dropships very, very slow. They don't get off the mark very well. So having that fortified position seems like it'd be very good. We're going to get U-238 shells. Once again, we're not getting stim pack. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, geez, they just, like, didn't alert me, really, for that. Maybe they did, and I'm just bad. Uh, let's get a turret right here for later protection. Speaking of non-alerts, so I'm pretty sure there was no, like, audio your base is under attack thing right there. Unless I'm just really, really, really bad. But in StarCraft 1, it actually gets worse than that. So the only time that that audio plays is when a unit survives damage. Oh, geez. Hello. So the way that it works in that game, I have an idea. I'm going to pull this guy and then into the bunk. Ooh, we're safe. Now, these do like no damage. I think they do two and a half damage. Five damage. They do five damage to bunkers. So we can just kind of chill here. They're kind of like Hellions in that respect. Very nice. Then repair it. So, what I was saying about the alert things, they have to survive the damage, which means that stuff like Dark Templar don't provide the auditory thing if you are playing as Zerg or if you are playing as Protoss because they kill the workers in one hit. It does for Terran because the SCV has 60 HP in this game. I think I went crazy over that a little bit last time too, but... It's just such a crazy number. SCVs are really good in this game, which is one of the reasons that I'm going to be pulling them. I forgot my commsat stations while I was explaining all of this. I'm just going to be honest there. It takes 34 seconds to build that. So we're going to do exactly that. Oh, I'm supply blocked again. And then we're going to go, and I'm going to hope that it works out. If it doesn't, I'm hoping to at least take down some of their infrastructure. So there's some spider mines here, some goliaths, and this area looks pretty clear actually. It really doesn't look that bad. I wish that other things were better against Terran right now. That is kind of my big problem is I'm stuck mostly on marine because I don't have access to the siege tank yet. And the siege tank is the real Terran killer. Actually it's a real everything killer that Terran has. It's a crazy good unit in this game. Base is under attack. Order. Go ahead, Commander. 
Oh, look at that. They're doing a drop. So our mine just activated. Do we have energy? 36 energy. I think I'm going to go right now. That was a really good timing. So we're just going to get these guys in here. Go, go, go. Load everything up. They just lost a bunch of stuff, so I might be able to hit a attack. Okay, we're going to go. Scan up here. I like this area. Seems pretty good. Mm, Alright, we dealt with that. What? When? How? Why? Where was he? I thought he was in one of these dropships. Oh, did he get shot down by the wraith? Let's check out what happened. Oh, I think there was two wraiths there. Did they shoot down our James? Oh, he was in this one. Oh, no. Okay, well, we'll just we'll resume from here. Base is under attack. Go ahead, HQ. Get out, James. Like there we go. He's fine. Can I, take your order? I treated these people without respect nor dignity. Is it just going to say that Rainer has been killed forever now? Base is under attack. I'm fine with that. Little Wraith attack coming on over here. We're just going to run our SCVs that direction. Bring the dropships back, and we might be in a real good situation. Oh, Kerrigan's here. That's not good. Uh, Kerrigan, you need to chill. I thought I was going to build the bunkers, but now I'm not so sure. I know there's a bunch of spider mines around, so I'm actually going to build a turret in order to try to scout. Because I do not want to get got by that. Spider mines actually are not triggered by vultures. Uh, any unit that can hover is immune, and that tends to be the vulture and workers. I think that's it. Oh, and the Archon. The Archon hovers. That can lead to some very weird scenarios. It's obviously mostly a good thing. But it can give some weird scenarios where you send one of those units forward, they don't trigger a mine, you think you're safe, and then the rest of your stuff comes. And they all get exploded. Okay, we're going to come supplement. We have another scan available. Keep this LZ clear. And try to get some stuff done. I keeps I every time that I look up at the thing that says Rainer has been killed, I get a little bit scared. We're doing good now, though. They're producing raids, which are just a bad unit. They don't have tanks, which is the answer to the Marine. So we're just going to be able to get this nice cleanup. Ooh, I heard a mine right there. Where's Jim? Okay, yeah, Jim, you can go flirt with Kerrigan over in this corner. This is fine. Ew, you pig! Did anyone else do this when they were kids? They basically played action figures with their units. <laughs> because I absolutely did. I am not ashamed to admit it. I would also do stuff like, if there was ever a bridge, I would use the uh, fire on ground command. Oh, I can't kill these. Okay. Use the fire on ground command with my siege tanks instead of just letting them murder stuff as it tries to come across, which I know is strictly inferior, but it was cool. Is that it? That's it. Rebel controlled sector. Antigua Prime. sure they deserved it. Uh, 
That is gruesome. They do a good job at uh, subtly insinuating that we might not be the good guys. Ooh. NORAD 2, the secret staging area on Antigua Prime Colony. Now, don't quote me on this, but I believe that Antigua Prime is the planet that you spend the most missions on throughout the StarCraft series that is not a capital planet. Not Ire, not Char, not Korhal, not Tarsonis. Actually, it might be more than Tarsonis, even. It appears that the Confederates are in a state of panic about the Antiguan Revolt. I'm picking up a high number of Confederate transmissions going back and forth between their outposts and their headquarters on Tarsonis. Most of the transmissions are heavily coded, but wait, here's something. There's a General Duke calling from Alpha Squadron flagship NORAD 2. We've crash landed and are being hit hard by the Zerg. Request immediate backup from anyone receiving this signal. Repeat, this is a priority one distress call. Zerg? Here? <sighs> Serves him right. About time they got a taste of what it's like to be in there mixing it up. Jim, I want you to move in and save that base. I'm positive I didn't hear that right. Arturus, have you lost your mind? Listen, I know Duke's a cold-hearted bastard, but an entire colony shouldn't have to suffer for that. Besides, a Confederate general could prove be a powerful ally. This is an opportunity we cannot miss. I don't like this at all. I'm not asking you to like it. I'm asking you to do it. Yes, sir. Great. Let's get this over with. I love how Mengsk always opens up with the, like, humanitarian approach, and then he says what he actually wants. Like, I don't know, it's very good to me. I like the style of writing. It's much more complex than the way that he is shown in StarCraft II. I have a lot of appreciation for it. Because when he talks that way, it makes a lot more sense why people would be willing to let him become their dictator. Alright, we got our 2SCV Go army. Oh, hello! No! Oh, wait, did I just kill... Who did I kill? Did any of my guys die? I think my fire bat died. Did I have a fire bat? It's fine. We don't need fire bats where we're going. Which is to win. Is this properly placed? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Can never tell. Alright, our eBay is on fire. Standard StarCraft 1 stuff. Now, what we have to do is we have to protect the NORAD 2 during all of this. Doing this, we better hurry. That ship won't last long against those Zerg. So the funny way to do this, what you have to do is bring Rainer and two dropships. Uh, it won't work here, I'm 99% sure, but in the speed run, what you do is you distract the enemy with your army while you run Jim all the way over here, and then you proxy a starport and you build. It's actually proxy two starports and build the two dropships. It's really dumb, but it's pretty funny. We're not doing that here. We're going to be playing it normally because this is hard mode on Mass Recall, so it's not going to work. Let's check what's up here. I think it's a bit... Oh, it's a Hydralisk. Jim a lot more excited about Hydras than I am. Yeah, it's a base. Perfect. And then there's a long area up here that seems to go to Mutas, and I cannot fight the Mutalisk. So what units do we have available? Obviously, the new unit of the day is the Goliath. And you know what? I might make a good deal of them. Goliath, actually a very, very solid unit in StarCraft 1. It's not, it doesn't excel at anything, except for capital ship killing, but it's not going to be able to do that here. A, because they don't have capital ships, and B, because they need the range upgrade for that. And that range upgrade is not actually introduced until Brood War. However, it does have a decent anti-air. It's got these auto cannons that deal 12 damage apiece, and it's got some durability. 
So I think that the Goliath is going to be my unit of choice here. What else is going to happen while this is going on is I'm going to have to hold off attacks here. So I want to have a good position. Auto repair is on. Auto repair is on. That's the best I can ask for. We can also repair the NORAD if need be. But I'm hoping we don't have to do that because I don't know how much it costs. Oh gosh. Oh, the Zerglins. This is why I want to go into those mech compositions, because we're just not really suited to fight Zerglings. Infantry doesn't really pack the punch that you need. As they get 1-1 one, one, or even 2-2, two, two, it becomes a slaughter. You need medics, you need science vessels, you need really anything. But Vultures and Goliaths, both pretty decent against the Zergling. Not like exceptional, but definitely can pull their own weight. Let's get these guys in a bunker, so they're not vulnerable anymore. One thing I would like to do is expand. I'm very, very light on cash at the beginning here. This base looks pretty good. And getting that two base economy is always something I'm a big fan of. I don't want to spend too long on this mission, though, because I want to keep these episodes between 20 and 40 minutes. That's always my goal. You know, it's not a challenge run. We're not doing drones only, which uh, is going up currently as the other series. <laughs> we just finished two days worth of two-hour VODs apiece. I don't want that to be the normal. It's not ideal, in my opinion. So we're going to try getting an expansion, hitting a solid timing, busting our way over here. Saving the princess, saving the day, easy peasy. We might do the proxy starport strategy just because it'll be easier. And faster. But we will fight our way there. Another thing that the Goliath is actually pretty decent at is fighting... Oh, drop your spiders, please. Oh, you killed your friend, Jim. That sucks. He's fine. He's fine. I need to have these spider mines placed before the fight, not after. Be a little bit more careful. Because I'm, oh, those were zero one lings, one carapace, no attack, and they still kind of crushed a bunker, and well, I killed the Goliath, but I'm going to blame it on them. We're going to get... Uh, how many factories do you think we need? Wow, I just asked you as if you're Twitch chat. <laughs> I really expect people to give me a genuine answer. Three factory, Grant. Five fact, you're on two base. Good to go, uh. So, Spider Mines is... Oh, hello, hello, these guys respawn. Good to know. Spider Mines are going to be the first thing I go for. We want double armory because it takes a long time to get these upgrades. And then, just keep making SCVs for now. There we go. That's how we want to do it. One spider mine, 15 minerals to secure that area. Now we're going to... Hey, come fight me. Oh. It didn't kill both. Spider mines. Now, there's a speed upgrade as well. I'll probably get it for defensive purposes, so I can defend both my bases with my vultures. However, I do not need more tech labs than this, which is great. Or, these are called machine shops. One thing that I think StarCraft II did very, very well is the transition of how add-ons work. So, in Star... Spore Colony. Okay, I thought that was... If that was a sunk and it was just going to harass my workers as they were mining, that would have been really funny. So, in StarCraft 1, the way that upgrades work, or the way the add-ons work, is every building has an independent add-on structure. And I think that's a terrible system. I think it's genuinely awful. And the reason being is the switchy mechanic between Re Reactor and Tech Lab is really cool. I think that it worked for the time, but it was definitely one of those things that were like, oh, we could improve this. And then they just did, and it was just better. Could you spider? Thank you. Base is under attack. 
Oh, we are under attack by Hydras everywhere. Jeez. I'm trying to get these extra facts up, but... Maybe getting that base caused them to be very angry. That could definitely be it. Yeah, that does seem to be it, is that we're just, like, in their territory now, and they are pissed about it. I'm gonna get one more factory if I can. Spider mines are free for the vultures, but you only get three. No, please drop the mines. That's all you're good for. Oh, I'm glad that I'm going vultures. They. The mines don't go after them, but they're still vulnerable to the splash damage, even though they're hovering. Gotta be very careful. Oh my goodness, chill, AI. What's going on here? Am I going to be able to get 2-2? Two -two? No, it's not available here. If I could kill this overlord, I think it might help things out. I'm going to give it a shot. Because I'm like 90% sure that's why they're so angry with me. I don't think I attacked anything. I do like this. All oh, mines are good. 1-1 one, one is going to be done soon as well. That's going to give my machine plating a much better chance against the Zerglings. That's going to help my transition into big Goliath energy. Let's get that machine shop upgrade for the Ion Thrusters. Movement speed on the Vulture. They're going to be able to zip around real quick once that's done. I like the idea of having this like little raider force that runs around to defend as I build up. It feels very janky Starcraft 1 Terran. I don't know why, but the Hellion never really hit me in the same way as the Vulture does. The Vulture has always been this cool bike, and it feels like the Hellion always has been a poser. I don't know if anyone else agrees with me on that, but it just doesn't quite feel right. Oh, I'm supply blocked. Vespine geyser exhausted. 70, 80, 90. Vespine geyser exhausted. Oh, that is one thing that's interesting to talk about. So in StarCraft 1, when your Vespine geysers exhaust, you can mine them forever. They mine one mineral or one gas per trip. It's not good, but it is something. Uh-oh. I just did the cardinal sin of StarCraft. I have 2 <laughs> Oh no, oh no, oh no. Repair. Well, we need to figure out something soon because I just lost all... Or I lost my repairing SCV that could repair my SCV, if that makes sense. Which is a huge loss. Okay, get these guys on gas. I'm actually going to start some SCVs to come with as a repair squad. We got a lot of guys in production. And then we're going to have to go, and I'm just going to have to hope it's enough. I am still a little bit scared about their mass sunken colonies. We can see they have a lot of stuff around here. Oh, jeez, those spider mines! Oh, we got to get out of here. Once we're in the field and we don't have to deal with them as much, then it'll be more okay. Let's go. Yeah, this is a good choke point right there. Well defended defense. Well designed defense by the enemy. Let's see if we can bust it. Very quickly, the vultures all died, but they're so cheap. And basically, you buy the spider mines and you get a vulture free. That's how I like to think of the unit. So we have the spider mines back here to keep us safe as we make our push through with the actual combat units. Now it's just a bunch of HP that you're getting. Also very good against the Zergling, which is nice. 
Dude. So this first base actually went down pretty smooth, probably because they pulled so much to attack me over time. Their defenders are a little bit lax. Your forces are under attack. You guys head over here. You guys can do this and let's start getting the starport. Oh, let's start getting the starport. There we go. Blue base is down. They don't have any production anymore. And I'm going to try my best to be very careful about the spider mines. So now it's really just a time game. Can I get here before the NORAD is destroyed by an attack wave? I know the path. So it won't be too bad. But I am a little bit scared. Because there was like people burrowing out here and stuff. Oh my goodness, hello. Whoa, Orange has Mutus. So these do not a whole lot versus, I think these are small. Let's go kill this base. For safety's sake. I don't want to deal with it again. Uh, put my gym in the back. Put my Goliath in the front. Let's take out their production. I don't know if this base is actually a threat. But I feel like we're in the neighborhood, so we might as well. The little macro engine is going quite nicely. You're never really going to get that much money in the early stages of StarCraft 1. Once you get into Brood War, then they're just like, oh yeah, macro is the thing. It is the king. But in the base game, they didn't really understand that you needed money to build units. It seems to be the thing they had to learn over time. We have very slow building kill speed here, especially the vultures who deal five damage apiece to these buildings. Same as a zergling, but slower. This is nice and safe. This is nice and safe. I'm going full vulture production at this point, and that is so that I can build these dropships for the object. Oh yeah, I need a control tower for that. If only they used some sort of modular add-on system that allowed me to switch between what I had and what I need. Then I could have used my machine shot. Oh, infested turn. Gotta be real careful about those because they could one shot Jim. They do 500. And Jim is not 500. Pretty sure the only person that could survive one of those blasts is like General Duke and Tassadar in their battlecruiser and carrier, respectively. Well, uh, General Duke's battlecruiser is not looking so good right now, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, now we need to get these dropships going. And we are in the home stretch, I believe. We're going to clear this whole area out, and then it's just going to be spines, I think. Spines, some spores, and I think that they have a good number of scourge, so that you, can't, uh, you can't cheese this by just running dropships over. Which, obviously, in the base game, you can. <laughs> Uh, I think that's how everyone did it as a kid, but you're not supposed to be able to. And the Scourge here are probably a little smarter. So let's just open up the way. Bring Jim... Oh, he can't get through. They're doing a good job of rebuilding. I don't know where this blue base that is providing the drones is from, because this is dead and that is dead. <gasps> oh no, James? Oh, oh gosh, okay, this is getting just no, it's gone. Okay, everything got really scary there for a sec. Let's get the dropship. Dropship is going to pick up Jim and then head over here. As we continue to fight this legion of spore crawlers. I don't know if Jim has to be on the ground, but we can drop him, no problem. There we go.
give you an angle, you slimy confederate. Jim, enough. I'll handle this. The confederacy has fallen apart, Duke. Its colonies are in open revolt. The Zerg are rampaging unchecked. What would have happened here today if we hadn't shown up? Your point? I'm giving you a choice. You can return to the Confederacy and lose, or you can join us and help save our entire race from being overrun by the Zerg. I don't think it's a difficult decision. Join forces with you? I'm a general, for God's sake. A general without an army. I'm offering you a position in my cabinet, not just some backwater post. Don't test my patience, Edmund. You've made the right choice, General Duke. I can't believe you're really gonna trust this snake. Don't worry, Jim. He's our snake now. Our snake now. Alright, that is gonna wrap it up for this mission. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. I am absolutely having a blast. It is, it's kind of fun. It's a nice little mix up to be playing just for the archives guys and not playing on stream. I don't have to worry about chat. I just get to say hi to you guys. It's nice. So thank you for watching. I will be ending this and there'll be another VOD up tomorrow. I hope you have a good day. Peace.